By now, I'm sure all of you have used Generative Fill in Photoshop, and my word is it's super interesting. Josh did a video recently where he used it to extend and populate the set of his studio, but I wanted to see how far I could push this idea. So here are some shots we're going to work with today. My hope is to transform them from generic stock footage into something a little bit more epic. Let's drop them into After Effects and pick a frame that we can extend. All right, this frame looks pretty good as it's the widest of our two characters are going to be apart. Let's bring it into Photoshop and see if we can extend the background a little bit more. Now, this guy is definitely looking a little bit too abstract for my taste. So I select the area I want to replace, give Generative Fill a suggestion of what I want to see, and then throw it into the Generative Fill oven and... All right, that doesn't look too bad. Not bad, Adobe, not bad. All right, let's bring this back in and see how this looks. We realign the footage and uh, of course it matches seamlessly. A little grain in that perfect cinematic aspect ratio and voila, an epic fight. But it still needs a little something something. A flock of birds will do it. Sweet. All right, shot two. This second shot is our character arriving at something. Now it looks like he's arriving somewhere and obviously in this shot, there's just nothing there. So let's put something in there for him to arrive at. Maybe like a mountain or a cave or a castle. This one looks pretty good. Nice and ominous. I just want you to think about that for a sec. I didn't have to match lighting or color correct or even blend anything. It just creates the scene for me flawlessly and effortlessly. If I was doing this manually, this would have taken me hours. And back in the day when they were doing this by hand, it took days. And now with just a few clicks, you've got to see. Let's bring this back into the comp. We line it up, parent it to the null, give it a cinematic ratio. This is the number in case you were wondering. Chef's kiss but it's still missing something. This all works good and well on something that's still, but what if it's moving? All right, let's try this shot. A little bit of parallax to mix things up a bit. I pick a frame and make sure I remember which one it is. That's very important. Then bring it back into Photoshop. Yo, Nick, listen to this killer track my cousin just made. Sweet dude, that's sick. Awesome, I want you to make a lyric video of this track in under one hour. Do you reckon you handle that? Uh, not really. Lyric videos take ages to make. Maybe I'm not making myself clear. You have one hour to make this lyric video or you're fired. All right, see you in one hour. Mmm. <sighs> Lyric Video Creator Kit 2, make lyric videos fast, 60 animated presets, customizable effects and templates, all in one handy MOGA, no After Effects skills necessary. Well, let's hope this works. Nick, how'd you go with the lyric video? Do I have to fire you? I don't know. Why didn't you tell me? I originally tried some mountains, which looked very Lord of the Rings-esque, but then I thought maybe I could mix this up with a temple. This one looks pretty good. All right, let's bring it back in. So since this isn't a still shot, we need to track. I apply two point trackers and track the scale and position since we are moving in. I just want to note that it's important for you to not put your track points where something will cross in front of it. I say this because I had to do this twice because old mate here decided to walk into my shot. All right, the points are tracked. We apply them to a null, align our Photoshop file, parent them to the null, but uh, as you can see, we have a small problem. You can clearly see the grass is moving here, but unfortunately in our still shot, it is not. So what do we do? Well, we could 3D model the grass and make it a 3D plane, but I'm lazy. So we're going to fudge it by hiding the scene. I originally used a tree from a stock library to hide the scene, but it kind of wasn't working for me. So I had this brilliant idea to generate a tree using Photoshop. And just like that, the lighting matched and it covered the scene brilliantly. But all right, all right, I know you guys can see the difference, but hopefully when this is placed in situ, you're never going to notice. But as I always say, if people are noticing the mistakes in your VFX, your movie's probably hot garbage. What, I've changed? 
I know, it's freaking cold in Australia at the moment. Okay, let's try something even more ambitious. I'm going to attempt to see if I can not only extend the background in this one shot, but also give our knight here a body. I mean, this is pretty extreme even if I wasn't using generated fill. In hindsight, the frame I picked to take into Photoshop was a little cut off at the top, so the helmet sadly is a little shorter than I'd like. I'll be honest, it did a bit of an average job creating the body for our knight. What are those? And I bring it back to After Effects and see how it fits. I track the background first to see if the plate matches up at all with the footage, and to my surprise, it actually does. I think what surprises me more is that After Effects actually track the movement of the background, even though it is crazy out of focus. Color me impressed. But obviously, I need to split this comp into two parts. I need to create a fill for the background and another for the foreground. Back into Photoshop, I separate our night out from the background and create a clean background plate. This is kind of mind blowing because creating clean plates used to suck if you didn't have a clean shot, but this looks really good. Now onto the foreground. I separate this as an element I can track onto the body, but I'm still not super convinced I like what I see, but I cut it out anyway and see how we go. Back in After Effects, I line up our clean background plate and apply the tracking data we got onto the background. Now to track the foreground element. I try a few different points, and thankfully since this is mostly a solid object, there are plenty of points to track onto. Now let's give our buddy a body, eh? Well, I definitely don't like this at all. Not only did I cut the neck off too early, but I'm realizing our knight looks like he's grabbed his clothes from the toilet store. Where did you get those clothes? At the toilet store? I could go back and fix it, but to be honest, I actually really hate it. So I abandon the body and crop in the shot and just keep the sides. Now to get the seamless match between the background and the foreground, I'm gonna have to rotoscope this guy out. What a blessing roto brush is, am I right? And finally, we add in our birds and bing bada boom, we have extended the night and their background to cinematic proportions. Don't raise your glasses too soon. But as I'm about to press render, I realize the top of the helmet is getting cut off. Boo. So I use a little trick here where I just take a still from the video where you can see the top of the helmet and cut it out. Track the position and rotation of the helmet, apply the tracking data to the top of the helmet, and now we have our final shot. Imagine what you could do with this power at your fingertips. As Jesus said, with great power comes great responsibility. I'm pretty sure that's Uncle Ben.